Hey there, this is Barbara McDermott with Shift Formula. I had one of my clients share with me today that their friend is very frustrated. Their friend is doing keto. And in doing keto, this person is struggling because they had said that they gained weight. What? A scale fail with all that effort behind it? Not cool. Doing keto really works for some and is challenging for others and it always comes back to the same answer and if you've seen any of my videos before you're going to know what that answer is right don't say it too loud i know you know it so let's look at why a doing keto could be a failure when it comes to the scale and of course we mean losing weight right that's what we're talking about so first of all keto we know is a slang word for what ketogenic which means what you do with your life to nudge your body to ketosis, right? Ketosis is when your body is burning body fat. Props for that, right? That's where we want to get. We want to get to the happy land of ketosis, right? So when we get to ketosis, we know because we're just not hungry. We're doing an extended fast this week, so we know our group is going to be in ketosis more often than not. We understand how that works. but Here's where we can fall into a problem. We can actually do too much keto. What does that mean, too much keto? Well, if you think that doing keto means eating a lot of fat, eating a lot of bacon, eating a lot of butter, eating a lot of fatty, you know, fat foods, we are misled or misguided. We, get, we don't have enough information, and we think that by eating the fat, that the fat that we're eating burns the body fat. Big X, that's not true. Eating fat doesn't make you burn your body fat. Is your body gonna have to do something with the fat you eat? Uh, yeah. But it's not gonna guarantee that you're gonna be burning body fat. Eating keto, doing too much keto, if you're not doing it correctly, really can mean that you're gonna be putting on pounds because if you're just eating, thinking that the fat is going to burn your body fat, that's wrong. So eating too many fatty foods can only happen, help, help you, when you get your insulin down low. Okay, so in our Shift Insiders group, we understand that doing keto is problematic. But we understand what ketogenic is and what ketosis is. And we know no one gets into ketosis unless they get their insulin levels down low. Why? Because when insulin levels are elevated, you are in body fat storage lockdown. There's no way around it. Only when you drop insulin down can we dine in on the fuel we're carrying. So we can fail at weight loss if we're actually doing the keto kind of fad way. Now here's the thing. Some bodies have great success and they don't even know why they did. And do you know who they are? Who are they? They're the young folks. The young folk, the whippersnappers. Why do the young people have an easier time? Why do they do keto and drop 30 pounds and go, yeah, Miss McDermott, look, I did keto, look what happened. And I'm not gonna tell you who that was, but someone I love. Well, the reason they can do it is because they have, since they have a younger body, they haven't developed a resistance to insulin, wait with me, which means their body's not putting out a lot of insulin all the time. Ours, as we age, 45 and up, we all have some degree of insulin resistance. So we have some degree of heightened amounts of insulin. And it takes time for your body to reverse that. So if you have been struggling for years with weight gain, it's going to take time to get insulin down low enough and often enough for you to literally dine in. Now, eating. A keto-focused diet is low carbohydrate. Carbohydrate's the one that is blood sugar and insulin stimulating. When you take the carbohydrate down in your life and allow enough fat for satiety, you're setting yourself up not to stimulate insulin, which over time gets you to a lower insulin level, which allows you to dine in and lose the weight and have a scale win finally. That's what takes time. So one of the problems with 
the keto fad, as I call it, is that we're doing too much eating and not enough realizing that no matter how much fat we eat, if we don't get insulin levels down and checked, that scale is going to be a fail. Okay, and then we go into this. Too much, too little, too late. We can actually do too little keto. What does that mean? What does that mean? It means a couple things. Sometimes if we're not eating enough fat, yeah, there's a thing. If you're not eating enough fat, you're going to be hungry and irritated and hangry, right? That's no way to live. So the trick is to eat enough fat to get you sated. This is what we're doing in our shifted, our fasting week. You know, we strategically eat to establish satiety. So we go for hours, cool, without eating. I started this morning. I'm still good. I'm going to have dinner with Charlie in a few minutes, but, you know, we're good. Eat enough fat. It carries you for hours. So ketosis is really what we want to get to, body fat burning. And even if you're eating keto, you can find that you get into ketosis too little. You're, you're not burning fat. You're eating fat, <laughs> too much keto, but you're not able to burn the body fat too little ketosis. When are we in ketosis? When we are going for hours, not eating pleasantly, comfortably. Body fat burning happens in the span of time between the keto eating. Let me say that again. Your body fat scale win, weight loss that you're seeking happens in the hours between the feedings. So we need to get ourselves longer periods of time not eating, because that's when our body gets resensitized to insulin. Let's think about this. Every time we've eaten for how many years of our lives, we've always had an insulin response, insulin response, insulin response, insulin response. It just happens every single time, especially the higher carbohydrate we eat, the higher the insulin response. This is why we are in a crisis of diabetes and obesity and inflammation and Alzheimer's. How many decades have we been told to get rid of the fat and go for the carbs a lot. So we've all developed a degree of insulin resistance, which means your body's putting out even more of the fat storage hormone, right? And the only way to quiet that down is to give your cells a break from its signal. When I go for hours without eating, I also go with, I go for hours without an insulin stimulating my cells. And when insulin's not stimulating your cells, your cells kind of relax and become resensitized to the insulin again. So your body over time starts secreting less, less. This is why it takes time, okay? So eating fat, thinking that the fat that we're eating burns our body fat, mm -mm, doesn't work. That's the first scale fail. Don't keep eating more and more fat, thinking that eating more and more fat is going to make you more and more less fat. Unless you know how to do it and get that insulin down, okay? And the second one, if the scale fails, we just get into keto, sis, not often enough and not long enough. Because it's when we're in those hours between feedings that we're actually going to dine in on the body fat fuel we're carrying and use it up. Okay, tomorrow I'm going to talk about fluctuations on the scale, even when you have it all dialed in right, and you know what you're doing, you're going to see fluctuations on the number between your feet on the scale. And I'm going to talk about that tomorrow and further explain why using up body fat or weight loss takes time. It really, really does.